Hey guys, Sweepy News here. So today I will be doing my Ultra Despair Girls trivia video. I know I said in my last video I would do a shipping video next, but I changed my mind, sorry. It'll um, either be the next video or I'll do it after I do a what if video. Also, before I get into the video, I would like to make a huge shout out to the Tumblr user Tai Chin Chin because I got like 90% of the information I'm going to be using in this video from their blog and the translations they did for the another episode art book. They no longer post on that account, but I figured I'd go ahead and give them a shout out just because I do appreciate all the hard work. There's a lot of stuff from the art book that they translated that I'm leaving out, so I recommend you guys checking their archive and going to around January of 2015 to where you can see all the posts that I didn't mention. And as always, I'll link their account below in the description if you would like to check that out. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. In the original version of another episode, Kana Nakajima from Ultra Despair Hagakure was meant to be the protagonist, and Haiji Toa was meant to be the secondary protagonist like Fukawa was in the finalized version. He was also planned to have an offensive version like Genocider, but this was called Killer Mode and he would enter it by breaking his cast open. The game was also originally planned to take place outside of Toa City, and the plot was focused on fighting the ultimate despairs rather than the Warriors of Hope. Haiji had a different name in the original version as well. He was originally called Haiji Hakamori. Like the other games, some of the beta designs for the characters in another episode were very different than what they turned into. Notably, one of Kamari's beta designs looked exactly like Kana Nakajima's, and more than likely this relates to how she was originally supposed to be the lead role. Kamari's last beta design before the official one used looks identical to Maki Harukawa's official design in V3. The beta designs for the Warriors of Hope went through many changes too. They were originally planned to all wear headphones, which the translator noted was likely supposed to reference the game The World Ends With You. Eventually though, they decided to only give the headphones to Masaru. You can also see in the beta designs that the developers went back and forth on the idea of Monica being in a wheelchair, and they changed their minds several times on the color schemes for some of the characters as well. One example being that originally Haiji and Monica were meant to share the same hair color, but the creators decided against this since they worried that their family connection in the game would be too easy to figure out. The first 20 seconds or so of the first trailer shown for Ultra Despair Girls was of the cast of the first two games drawn in an adorable art style, playing sports and having fun. This was a prank made by the developers to fool the audience into thinking the spin-off game would be a happy one before showing the actual trailer. Similarly to the games before it, Famitsu hosted a popularity poll to determine who the most popular characters were among the Japanese fanbase back after it first released. The top five most popular characters in order were Kamaru, Fukawa, Genocider, Kotoko, and Kamida. The creators admitted that Monica was a character that they created to be hated by the audience. They felt that the other villain characters they had created before were seen as being cool and dangerous and were generally liked by the fan base. So they thought it would be fun to make a character that was very, very unlikable. The anime producer of another episode, Yuji Higa, had a minor cameo in the diner scene at the beginning of the game. As you can tell though, his appearance was very short-lived. Originally, the reincarnation for Jinko Onishima was supposed to be her very own character. In the first draft, the original idea was that they were almost identical to Onishima, establishing that they were around the same age in senior high school, along with identical personality and design. The garments of Onishima's are the same, but the breakthrough approach was said to be for her to be a black woman. Going along with this, you can see that there's actually a beta design for this version of the character as well. The second idea they had regarding this character was to make her a little girl who took over the Warriors of Hope. They described her as lurking inside that not-so-innocent behavior is madness searching for despair. Originally, Fujisaki's mom was planned to play a bigger role in the game. It was revealed that the Fujisaki family was supposed to be credited for inventing the hacking gun. More than likely, it would have been her who created it since she was described as being an inventor. The creators said she was a more sociable person compared to her son and that she was a person person of more value than her husband Taichi. In the epilogue, the camera focuses on the left center where you can see Monami on the side of a building. This was meant to imply that the story continues in Danraputsu. The creators had two ideas before settling on this one though. They originally just had a Monokuma in place of Monami, and the second idea was supposed to have a picture of Monami along with, and the story follows with two. This was meant to perplex the viewer into wondering if it was referring to Danraputsu or if they were possibly 
possibly be a sequel to this game. The creators admitted that Masaru is supposed to be based off of the cliche young boy protagonist. His band-aids are based off of the many young boy protagonists that have them, but also doubled up as some foresight to what his home life was like. He also shares the same name with the main character of Digimon Savers. His over-the-top heroic attitude was more than likely based off of this character too. Similarly to the main characters, there were a lot of beta Monokuma designs that were discarded for the main game. Some designs are creepy and borderline disturbing, while others are pretty cute or humorous looking. Unfortunately though, I couldn't find any translation for the creator's notes for these. In the original version of another episode where Kanon and Haiji were meant to be the protagonists, Haiji was meant to have a rival character named Tokuichi Toa. This name was later used for his father in the official version. In the original version though, he was meant to be a former chairman of the Toa group. The creators described him as being a person who would make a good rival for Tagami, since he had ferocity, harsh values, and a madness for rivalry. In another episode's art book, there's a scrapped robot model design named Soda Robo. It implies that Despair Gundam would have operated this robot if it was included in the game by saying, the passenger in the robot on the left edge may look like Tanaka Gundam, but is it? The full quote for this is, going by the chronological order of two, the settings for Kazuichi Soda was for him creating robots. The robot scenario on the left side was an idea considered during development stages. Soda's talent really shines when coming up with designs with these fully loaded robots, where he makes four-legged walker type, yet also a stylish wind-powered suit for military use. And not only that, he makes a Justice Robo-like super robot. And last but not least, Taichi Fujisaki's demon name is Tai Chinchin. Tai is obviously taken from his name, but can also be translated as big. And Chinchin is the children's term for penis. So, Taichi's demon name literally means big penis, which I personally find hilarious. Anyways, that will conclude the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, like I said, I'll either do a top ships video next or a what if video. I also do plan on doing a live stream later this week, so um, probably like the 8th or the 9th or the 10th is what I'm looking at right now. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to let me know if there's any trivia facts that I didn't include that you really like, or if you knew or didn't know the ones mentioned in the video. I didn't really know a whole lot of these before I made this video to be honest, but, but uh, like I said, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you real soon. Subscribe to Weeby News for more hope-filled videos.